Volkswagen Tiger, India's safest SUVW. BJP MP and lawyer Mahesh Jetmalani drops a bombshell. Examined thread bear, unlike the BBC documentary, right? Uh, this, the entire evidence on record. Please familiarize yourself. Accuses the BBC of taking money from China. You know, they've taken money from Hawaii for a long time, and there's been uh, uh, venomous anti India propaganda, you know, uh, complete lies spread about the Indian Army's activities in Kashmir. Mahesh Jetmalani accuses the Congress of peddling Chinese agenda in India. The Congress hits back, says don't deflect from the BBC documentary. If, um, if, if the Member of Parliament has got uh, solid evidence, he should go before uh, the, the appropriate oversight body in, uh, in England and expose the BBC in, in Britain and expose the BBC. The BBC is a publicly funded. If BBC taking money from China, put evidence in public domain. The political fight over BBC Huawei link is our top focus on India First. So Mahesh Jetmalani has come out all guns blazing on the BBC documentary on Prime Minister Narendra Modi. He's questioned the timing of the documentary. He's questioned the funding of BBC, especially its overseas projects being funded by a Chinese entity, Huawei. The Congress, of course, sees this as deflection tactics. Mahesh Jetmalani joins me on India First for more on the BBC's Huawei link and why he suspects a China link to the targeting of Prime Minister Narendra Modi during India's G20 presidency. I'm Gaurav Savant as always. Let's get started with the headlines. Adani Enterprises FPO gathers momentum, gets fully subscribed. UAE-based firm, a major buyer, opposition seeks discussion on the Adani report in Parliament. Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu hands over the prestigious Haifa port to an Adani group-led joint venture. This a year after Adani and Israel's Garrod Group secured rights to buy 100% shares of the port company. A day before the Budget Economic Survey of India pegs the financial year 24 GDP growth at 6.5%, India remains the fastest growing economy in the world. President Draupadi Murmu delivers her first address to Parliament, says today's government is stable, fearless and decisive. Opposition calls the speech a bundle of lies. Big statement by Andhra Pradesh Chief Minister Jagan Reddy announces Vishakhapatnam to be the new capital of the state. Jagan says he'll move to Vizag himself very soon. The political fight over BBC's documentary on Prime Minister Narendra Modi is our top focus on the show. In a fresh salvo, the BJP has alleged a China funding link to BBC and the documentary that questioned Prime Minister Narendra Modi's role in the 2002 Gujarat riots, claiming that BJP is anti-India. BJP's Rajya Sabha MP and lawyer Mahesh Chetmalani said... It's a cash for propaganda deal between BBC and Chinese entity Huawei, which incidentally is banned in several countries. In another attack, Mahesh Jetmalani said the BBC has a long history of spreading disinformation about India and then went on to allege that this suits the Congress's agenda. The BJP also claimed that the documentary was being used to torpedo India's growth story. The Congress, of course, 
asked for evidence to be put in public domain. The BJP's back-to-back -back attacks, especially after the UK magazine Spectator went on to say that the BBC uses funds from a Chinese company, Huawei, for its overseas propaganda operations. That story went viral and was tweeted by Mahesh Chit Malani. Well-known fact that several Chinese companies sponsored by their government have been dealing with the BBC and have also bankrolled the BBC in the last uh, couple of years. So it is quite likely that uh, the Chinese establishment, along with the BBC, with our opposition in tow, is uh, using this documentary to torpedo India's growth story. Let's not forget that Rahul Gandhi's close confidant, Jairam Ramesh, has been a brazen apologist of the Chinese uh, firms here in India. He spoke several times out of turn when he was a minister in the UPA government, including backing Hawaii, whose entry was questioned as a security threat uh, to the country if they were to be part of the telecom sector. I think if, if, um, if, if the member of parliament has got uh, solid evidence, he should go before uh, the, the appropriate oversight body in, uh, in England and expose the BBC in, in Britain and expose the BBC. The BBC is a publicly funded by the, and it's got a, in Britain and it's got a separate oversight body. It's a very serious allegation he's making. If he's got a proof about it, he must go before that uh, oversight committee and expose the BBC. This is actually quite childish. I mean, there is a, uh, there is a, a uh, documentary out there. If the government believes that the documentary is factually incorrect, they must come up with a counter-narrative instead of banning it. And in this modern age, nothing can be banned technologically. You'll always find a workaround towards it and people will watch it and people are watching it. People will disseminate it and people will distribute it. So banning is all a very crude method and to, to rubbish the, 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 the motives of the, of the documentary without uh, uh, actually uh, addressing the points raised in the documentary is also quite... Uh, mm -hmm. uh, quite ridiculous. If they really want to talk about China, they should actually talk about the Chinese incursions in Indian territory and the infrastructure they're building into land which actually belongs to us. Huawei has been banned in at least seven major countries, including India, the United States, Australia and Canada. The company is infamously known for using its product to spy on other nations. It's seen as an extension of the Communist Party of China. It's also been in the dock for allegedly conducting shady business practices. The stringent ban also because Huawei's close links to the Chinese government. Now, this company was started in 1987 and has been in the line of fire. It got several major contracts, but they stand accused, not just spying for the Chinese government on foreign countries, but also on their own people, especially not just Han Chinese, but also in Tibet and in Xinjiang. So I want to bring into this conversation Mahesh Jetmalani. Mahesh Jetmalani now joins me on the show. Mahesh Jetmalani. You know, you're a distinguished lawyer. You are also a BJP MP. But sir, where is the evidence? Where is the evidence? And explain this link between China and the BBC. Why do you smell a rat, sir? Well, the China link is that the BBC has received funds over a period of time from a Chinese linked state entity called Huawei, a telecom company we've all heard about, right? Uh, and it has been doing this for a long time. Now, as you know, Huawei has been a security risk, designated a security threat in two countries, which are our quad allies, Australia and the United States. And finally, the UK, after first inviting them for trial for the 5G trials, right, uh, uh, under American pressure, Boris Johnson finally decided that they were also a security threat to the UK and they didn't want them to perform in the 5G trials. Now, notwithstanding the fact that they were banned from those trials and were sanctioned, the, the link which I put, the spectator link, which I annexed to my tweet, right, disclosed that, and it is, this has never been denied, it is fully established, that they were taking money from Hawaii, right, in an entity, overseas entity, called StoryWorks, right. Now... There's a history of anti-India propaganda. You're okay. all too aware, of, aware about it. 
they've, they've castigated the Indian Army for, you know, activities that they never conducted in, in uh, Jammu and Kashmir. They have uh, presented a map of India. They've always published a map of India, truncated without Kashmir, right? And they were hauled up by the Indian government finally in 2021, right? And they had to apologize. So there's been a history of anti-Indian propaganda, and si simultaneously, there's been a history of receipt of money, right? There's a lot more to that. I can also tell you there's a lot more material out there in the public domain, which okay. I have also gathered, right? The, 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 the documentary content, source content, is heavily tainted. It's a, it's a very sinister source, right? And I, 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 we, I, I will expose that gradually, right? So everything about this reeks of you know, yes, it's a sinister source. It's, uh, this whole thing is, uh, the whole thing is re reeks of malafides and bad faith. It reeks of a hatchet job. Okay. And Mr. Fact, Malani, it is nothing else but a hatchet okay. job. Okay. You're calling it a hatchet job. You're saying it's sinister. But on the issue of Chinese funding um, and, and, and this documentary per se... Are you alleging that BBC made a documentary on the Gujarat riots at China's behest? Why do you suspect the timing of this documentary, sir? I suspect the timing, obviously. I mean, because this, the, 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 the documentary is essentially based on an inquiry report of 2002. That inquiry report right, was carried out by the then... Foreign Secretary of the UK, a okay. gentleman by the name of Jack Straw. Jack Straw. Now, you will find overwhelming material against uh, Jack Straw regarding his connections with the Chinese state. Right? And uh, he was also hauled up, incidentally, though this may not be of great relevance for the BBC documentary, he was also hauled up for uh, uh, that a false report which he had curated for the purpose of... Uh, on weapons of mass destruction for the purpose of justifying the invasion into Iraq. He's also had other taints uh, which are in the public domain. Other, other okay. uh, you know, skeletons in his cupboard or, you know, uh, taints on him. Okay. Okay. But specifically on, on this BB document, the BBC documentary um, and, and the Chinese funding of BBC, uh, Congress MP Karthi Chidambaram spoke to us just a short while back and he said if there is evidence of a direct link, uh, it's a serious matter, should be taken up by the government and all the evidence that you may have needs to be put in, in public domain, sir. I mean, the Congress looks at this as deflection tactics. What do you mean a link? There is money from Huawei. They have not denied the spectator report. They can't deny the report. And who is Karthi Chidambaram to say that? Why is he coming to the defense of BBC? He should be looking after his own interests, first of all. First of all, ask Karthi Chidambaram, isn't he, isn't he being investigated? Isn't he being investigated by the CBI and the Enforcement Directorate for taking money for giving Chinese visas illegally? Okay, who let me talk about China. Okay, okay. You know, th this, this political fight at home, uh, you know, it's not just Karthi Chidambaram. For example, uh, if you were to talk about senior Congress leader and Congress MP Jairam Ramesh, you called him a Chinese pet, sir. Why? It's again in the public domain. I mean, uh, it's a, <laughs> he's advocated for ages when both... I mean, since 2005, of all things, in 2005, when he wrote that book, Chindia, uh, he, he had at least three paragraphs devoted to the, uh, you know, he exalted uh, Hawaii in, in that, uh, I, I've also tweeted on that. He exalted them and said that the Indian government should allow them full access in India and expand their activities here. He repeated that when he went to China on a visit as environment minister. The, the Home Ministry then, the UPA Home Ministry, took serious objection to what he said. In spite of that, he went on, uh, you know, Tom Tomming, uh, that uh, Huawei had a great role to pay, play in India and its activity should be expanded. Finally, Dr. Manmohan Singh, his own Prime Minister, had to call him in and haul him up. And then he shut okay. his mouth. But sir... When you, when you look at the story, a divided house on a very serious issue like China, is India's divided polity actually advantage China? 
They question everything that the Indian Army has said. First they did it. Now, of course, the weight of evidence. And I saw your, I must return your compliment, Gaurav, your, your, your uh, uh, show, showing the evidence of Pakistani leaders acknowledging Yuri and Balakot, right? And saying they fear more, including then Prime Minister Imran Khan, has now that force of weight of evidence has forced them to keep their mouth shut, which is why Dig Vijay Singh was silenced by both Jairam Ramesh and Rahul Gandhi on the fag end of this uh, Bharat Jodo Yatra. Right? Now, the same thing is happening on China. They keep talking about as if China had been victorious in Doklam, China has been victorious in uh, uh, Tamang, China has been. Uh, uh, Victorious uh, in Galwan. And we've got a bloody nose. Pitai hui hamari. Which kind of Indian uses that language? Are you a nationalist Indian or are you, are you a hater of the Indian army? Okay. For joining me here on India First, Mr. Jait Malani, many thanks. Let me now widen the scope of this discussion. Clearly, this isn't the last uh, on, this, uh, on this issue. Both the Congress and the BJP officially chose not to be a part uh, of the debate at this stage. Joining me are two very well-respected analysts. I have Ambassador Vishnu Prakash. Uh, Ambassador Vishnu Prakash has been the spokesperson of the Ministry of External Affairs. He's dealt uh, with uh, foreign media organizations. Uh, he's also been our ambassador to several countries. Tehseen Poonawala is an analyst uh, close to the Congress and Tehseen Poonawala. Mahesh Jait Malani says there is a pattern to BBC's anti-India propaganda from showing a wrong map of India to the wrong representation of Jammu and Kashmir to what the government now says is a biased documentary. Is there merit that the opposition is actually falling prey to foreign agenda? Good evening, Gaurav. Thank you so much for having me on your show. Good evening to all your viewers. There are two aspects to this debate that I want to bring in. Aspect number one. Before the government of India actually came down with a heavy hand and banned this BBC documentary, this documentary was already six days prior to that in public domain. And I, for one, when I got it on WhatsApp, I thought, what is new in this documentary that hasn't already been discussed? And the most honorable Supreme Court has given the most honorable Prime Minister clean chip. So there is nothing more to it. But somebody obviously in the Prime Minister's office decided to be more loyal than the king and decided to come with a heavy hand and ban something. And you know, Gaurav, more than anybody in this internet age, nothing ever can be banned. And that's obviously sparked of a reaction that, uh, you know, gave the documentary traction that the government hoped it wouldn't have got. So point number one, nothing can be banned and you should not ban anything for the sake of whatever has happened in the past. You cannot ban things. Two, the government and the law minister in particular claims the clean shit from the Supreme Court, which they've got. The same Supreme Court that they're fighting against today and they want to change the system and the Supreme Court has given the government a clean shit. Now to the most important point with regards to this documentary and this whole Chinese uh, conspiracy and Congress conspiracy, as Mr. Jait Malani puts it. Do you know, Gaurav, when the UPA demitted office, the fiscal deficit with China was $36 billion. Today, it stands at $101 billion. The telecom company that you're talking about, rightly so, that is banned in 5G trials, is actually operational in 4G, 3G, and 2G, even today in India. And what can happen in 5G that cannot happen in 4G? You know, Gaurav, okay. and you cover uh, national security, and you know I have a lot of respect for you. China attacked Ames. You know how they attacked our ser servers. They're waging war against us. It is this government that is not tough against China. We okay. are with the government. I am so, saying the government's given... My question is, why is our opposition falling prey to China. Fair enough, it's I take your point, who's, but, who's, but who's, who's let me bring in China Ambassador Vishnu Prakash, because Ambassador Vishnu Prakash, your assessment of the BBC when you were in government and you've been our ambassador in different countries, does the BBC, as Mahesh Jait Malani alleges, peddle an anti-India agenda and your take on the Huawei funding of BBC? Good evening, Gaurav. I have no means to confirm or contradict what Mr. Jait Malani has said. But, well, is it, if it, is it possible? Yes, it is very much possible. China has a motive to undermine India, which we all know. Huawei doubly so. And Huawei's links with the Chinese establishment are very well known. So it, uh, everything is within the realm of possibility, but uh, it, there is no uh, direct evidence uh, at the moment, at least in the public domain, pointing to the culpability of China in this uh, documentary. But why are we surprised about BBC? I've had enough occasions of dealing with BBC uh, when I was a spokesperson. And I very clearly remember that they were on their website trying to project Kashmir as a separate entity. 
for them uh, they have i must compliment them they have an impeccable track record of maligning india and nothing about india is good as far as bbc is concerned our legal system is bad our democracy is faulty our human rights record record is bad uh you know when the islamic jihadis uh, jihadis uh, target india they are militants they are not terrorists when hindus get killed in kashmir okay. there is deafening silence when a terrorist is gets eliminated is brutality by indian security forces i mean that is bbc for you they so have bbc does peddle an agenda uh, you know and, have, and you're very clear a, about they that have, they have a very jaundiced view of india and which is getting more pronounced by the day it's a jaundiced no view of india ever... getting pronounced by the day and tehsin punawala yet a section of our opposition quotes the bbc wants to peddle the bbc uh, agenda against india i mean it's the bbc it's not the bible I agree with you, Gaurav. And the Supreme Court gave this Prime Minister clean chit and the law ministers fighting with the Supreme Court. But you know, I have a lot of respect for Vishnu Prakash ji. And when Vishnu Prakash ji says that the BBC has an agenda against India, and I have no reason to argue with somebody as senior. It is Prime Minister Narendra Modi, 2013, who is saying you cannot trust Akashwani and Doordarshan, but you can only trust BBC. Sir, That's again, uh, the Prime Minister. My question <laughs> to you is about the opposition. Very but specific questions about the opposition peddling foreign agenda against India, sir. You know, my question to you is very specific. You know, uh, time is at a premium God. today. My only question to you would be, you know, it's it's like Amitabh Bachchan in Diwar saying, "Jao, ja ke uska sign kara ke lao." Sir, that doesn't solve my problem as an Indian. Of course, it doesn't, and therefore the question should be asked to the present government: Why, in 2013, the Chief Minister of Gujarat was proposing and fighting for BBC? Why today the trade deficit? So, because you did that in 2013, the opposition is within its rights to peddle BBC's agenda in 2022. Is your answer fair enough, no, Ambassador Vishnu Prakash? Permit me a political question. You no. give me a diplomatic perspective on it. B the BJP says from Doklam to Galwan to Yangtze, the opposition either speaks. To the Chinese ambassador, or uses words like "hamare jawano ki pitai kar di." Uh, does that weaken India's stance? Is that the question to me? Yes, yes, Ambassador Vishnu Prakash. Yeah, you know, all I know is that when there is external aggression, or there is an external threat, or there is a situation which is uh, which is a national challenge, everybody rallies around the flag. And uh, it is a pity that democratic India, uh, we are we look like a house divided, and we uh, say things which should not be said. Uh, it is unfortunate, and I really wish that uh, despite the differences which are which are bound to happen in a democracy, those differences are set aside while there is an external threat, and after that we can go at go at each other. But why should we be seen as a divided house when there is external threat and China is breathing down our neck? It's beyond me. It's sad. It's unfortunate. Okay. May I just make one line? Just one line? Yeah, one line, please, because I have another story that's coming from across no, the border. No, no. But go on, no, sir. I, I, I agree with the ambassador completely, except what the ambassador or Gaurav, you are not answering is why is this government allowing uh, trade with China to balloon to under one billion dollars when there's a government report that says the items we import from China can get from three other countries at, at much lesser price? Why okay. is it being allowed to balloon? Ambassador Vishnu Prakash has his hand China's up. Government. You know, I put that question to the government as often as possible. You're absolutely right. Non essential from china must be banned but ambassador go on sir last word to you well you know if you look at the trajectory of the trade with china since the year 2000 it has been increasing uh, yes the government wants to ban it but overnight it cannot be done the processes have started we have to find alternative sources we cannot traumatize the economy by abruptly cutting down imports from china but that efforts are ongoing and it's only a matter of time before uh, things will change. I will let it that be the last not... word on this part of breaking news that's coming from across the border. The death toll from the suicide bomb that ripped through a mosque in Peshawar in northwestern Pakistan has now risen to 100, making it one of the deadliest uh, terror strikes in Pakistan. The Peshawar police suspect at least 12 kilograms of explosives was used by the suicide bomber. They're trying to figure out whether there was one or more. This attack has left more than 200 people injured in Peshawar. This is being seen as a massive national security crisis in Pakistan. Police in Pakistan suspect that an offshoot 
of the Tehrike Taliban Pakistan was directly responsible for this terror strike. A lot of reactions are coming in. Let's quickly listen in. Look, Barudi Mawad, which is our understanding, is that 10-12 kilos can be done. In this case, the most damage of Barudi Mawad is not done. धमाके की शॉक वेव्स की वजह से छत नीचे गिरी है पूरी और लोग मलबे तले दब गए हैं तीन इसकी जो कंक्रीट की बीम्स थी उन बीम्स के नीचे लोग आए हैं और पूरी छत छत नीचे आ गई फर्श का लेवल छत का लेवल एक हो गया ज्यादा जानी नुकसान जो है हमारा विल पाकिस्तान रिफॉर्म in 2014, Pakistan had suffered a massive terror attack. 130 Pakistan army children were killed in Peshawar. Pakistan didn't reform. Then we'll wait and watch. That is all I have for you on India First this evening. Business Today with Abha Bakaya. Up next. Respond. Are these charges that are in in should be investigated? Have they been investigated, or do you believe Hindenburg has brought out something new? As a research analyst, I must commend the Hindenburg report because they have made a persuasive argument, fully supported and documented with facts, either from government agencies' investigative reports or from the company's disclosures. These have very rightly raised very serious concerns. And, you know, the eating of the cake is when you eat it, actually eat it. And it's very clear that the market has shown its concern and has gone and agreed with some of those issues raised by the Hindenburg report. And that is why you've seen such a severe fall mm -hmm. in the share prices. Uh, but but what, are the specific, no, uh, Radhi, what are the specific... Are very specific. What are the specific charges that you believe have still not been answered by Adani's? See, the charge is this, that, and this is the main thing, when you have certain entities which are rooting funds from Mauritius, are they really the promoter's funding, which is what the Hindenburg alleges, and which is not classified as promoter holding? And where is the source of funds? Because they have raised some very valid issues, and they've given examples of certain companies, mm -hmm. where, which are kind of shell companies, which hardly have any employees, hardly have any business, mm -hmm. but they seem to be rooting massive amounts of money into the Adani group of companies. And the Adani group of companies in turn is sending monies back. So the central question in money laundering is, what is the source of these funds? Now, when particularly they come from you know, these tax havens like Mauritius, mm -hmm. it does raise a very serious concern uh, because these are tax havens. They have been set up really to hide and disguise the original ownership of money. Now, these are the questions which the market wants to know. Mm -hmm. Now, Adani companies will be obviously very reluctant to part with any information because firstly, as per Adani, they are not related companies to the Adani groups. Mm -hmm. So on paper, obviously, they will not know what is the source of, of these companies' funding. Mm -hmm. But what Hindenburg is alleging is that actually they are part of the Adani group and they should know. So this is the question which I think people you know, have. Do they support the Hindenburg report or do they support so, Adani? You have said that you are in the process of changing uh, or evaluating uh, the option of getting a global big sis audit firm for Adani Total Gas. Shah Dandaria is the current auditor there itself. Uh, by, by when will this happen and why, why are you changing? Is it part of a uh, mandatory rotation or some other reason? No, no, both, uh, both reasons. One is that uh, we, uh, you have to see the Adani Total Gas. Adani hmm. Total Gas, Total is the joint promoter with us. Hmm. Total is a global firm. Hmm. They sit on the board also with us. Hmm. They have seen how Shah Dandaria works. Hmm. Do you think if they had an issue, they will not say anything? Okay. That's number one. Hmm. That shows you the quality of Shah Bhandaria. Hmm. That it is acceptable even to a global, large, global major. Hmm. Now, our own requirement, our own development, our own growth means that 
we would also want we are going to go for global issues of debt out of adani trans adani total gas mm. when we do that we want certain comfort letters opinions which better that global 6 is there because that comfort letter those opinions are of certain requirement they might have to require sign off in the us they might require sign off in europe so that's where global 6 will have presence okay. so we'll have joint audit now when adani enterprise tomorrow becomes it itself starts issuing paper globally we'll look at that also see this is decided by business requirement adani enterprise already has global law firm uh, uh, accounting firms as its auditor for the businesses because adani airports issues a global paper already so therefore it has uh, grand fountain as as a as one as the auditor okay so 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 it is driven by business needs it is driven by your compliance requirements it is driven by what is that you are trying to achieve okay so if you issue paper in europe or in america then some sign off might be required in that domestic jurisdiction okay Hello and welcome to Business Today. I'm Abha Bakaya. The Adani Enterprises follow-on public offer has received bids worth 50.81 million shares against an offer size of 45.5 million shares. What does this amount to? The offer stands fully subscribed at 1.12 times on the final day of bidding. We'll get you more on this, but for now let's shift focus to the big headline of the day, the pre-budget economic survey. Finance Minister Nirmala Sitharaman tabled the pre-budget economic survey in the Lok Sabha. Let's take our viewers through a quick cheat sheet of the key highlights from the all-important survey. The survey forecasts a baseline GDP growth of 6.5% in FY24. Even with lower growth forecast for the next fiscal versus the current one, the pace would still make India's growth the fastest among the bigger economies. Growth for the current fiscal is pegged at 7% versus 8.7% in FY22. GDP growth for year 23-24 is seen at 6 to 6.8%. Private consumption and capital formation top the list of growth drivers. On the CAPEX front, ministry believes that private CAPEX needs